let's take a look at one more effect to help solidify your understanding of node-based visual effects work. Suppose we want to create a glow around the blue lights of the UFO. What we need is to isolate just the blue lighting and build the glow from that. Now, we could go back to our 3D app and just render out the lights by themselves, but we already have what we need right inside our compositor. We begin by clicking in the gray space of the node flow area. This deselects any selected nodes. By default, Fusion will automatically connect new nodes to any node that's selected, and in this case, we don't want that. Now we'll search for and add a Luma key node. We'll connect the Luma key to the output of the UFO node and then load it into the viewer. You can see that right out of the box, the Luma key has gone to work isolating the brighter parts of the image. Going back to our analogy of streams of water, you'll now see that we have two streams flowing out of the UFO node. Essentially, what we've done is divert an identical copy of the UFO stream into the Luma key. Each copy of the stream is identical. In fact, we could have dozens of streams all flowing from the same node, each carrying an identical copy of the node from which they're flowing. In this specific case, the Luma key is already doing a great job of isolating the highlights. We'll just tighten up the contrast to make those highlights more solid. Then to create our glow, we'll use the compositor's best friend, the Blur node. Making sure the Luma Keyer node's still selected, we'll add the blur, load it into the viewer, and then adjust the size to create a nice strong glow effect. The last step is to composite our glow over the original image. We'll select the merge that currently represents the final state of our shot and add yet another merge beneath it. Connect the input of the new merge to our blur, and we're done. Well, almost. If we load the new merge into the viewer, we'll see that the new element dulls and flattens the shot. That's because instead of simply compositing the glow over the shot using the normal blending mode, we really instead want to screen it over. And with that, we're done. No need to buy a custom plugin, just a couple of extra nodes, and our effect is achieved. Let's quickly recap. What we have here are two versions of the UFO. One is being composited over the background in the usual fashion, the other is being keyed, then blurred, and then screened over the rest of the composite. Notice that the main version of the UFO is unaffected by the Luma key or the blur. Why? Because we have another copy of the UFO stream diverted before it passes through the Luma key and blur filtration plants. So its water arrives at Merge 3 untainted. If instead we chose to take a copy of the stream after it had passed through the Luma key and the blur, we get an entirely different result. And that's the true power of node-based compositing. No matter how radically you alter the look and feel of an element in your comp, you can always grab a fresh copy of the image upstream before all the other nodes have done their dirty work. Which is what makes node-based compositing a truly non-destructive, non-linear way to work. 